Okay, and with that, I will pass off the torch to Katrina, who is joining us as our public engagement lead with NASA. And I'll let you explain what we're gonna be doing today, Katrina, and I'll stop sharing my screen. Oh, and you'll have to, um, you might have to unmute too. Just I, to I just did, sorry about that, a little bit of a delay. Thanks, Martha. Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? You can let me know how you're doing in the chat. Um, I'm Katrina Young. I am a public engagement lead for NASA Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia. So I am coming to you from Virginia. And this evening or afternoon, late afternoon, we're going to go through a fun, engaging, hands-on activity um, where we're going to learn about the Artemis program and our um, solar system a little bit as we meet Wade Mickley, who is going to lead you on that activity. In the chat, I'm just curious to know, are there any boys and girls on the line? So if we have anyone with, let's say, elementary or middle, um, middle school age children or youth at home doing this activity or soon to do this activity with us, can you let me know? Uh, I'm just curious. If you type it into the chat, I can share with Katrina. I did hear some voices while we were joining up, so I yeah. know some confirmation there. <laughs> I did too, Martha. That's why I was curious. I see one person said that they're in middle school, so um, if you're willing to share, uh, I'd appreciate that. Um, but if not, if you don't want to share, that's okay too. Oh, I see another person in elementary school. So what we're going to do again this evening is do an activity called Galaxy Spinner Craft, um, and it's all about creating a craft using a water bottle or a sports drink bottle and creating your own little rocket that's going to orbit or go around um, your own little solar system. Um, but before we do the activity, I want to share with you guys that did you know NASA and its astronauts are going back to the moon? Post in the chat if you knew NASA is planning to send astronauts back to the moon. You can just say yes or no. That'll let me know. Carrie says yes. Okay, great. So NASA's planning to send astronauts to the moon. Does anyone know what year we're planning to send them? Is it 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, or way, 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 way out there? I'm gonna guess 2020. Four. <laughs> All right. Somebody said 2021. This Martha year. said 2021. <laughs> Someone messaged me 2025. Let's see. One other one. 2024. So who? Uh, Matthew posted 2024. So Matthew, you are correct. NASA is planning to send the first woman to land on the surface of the moon, as well as the next man. And I want to show a little video clip. It's about four and a half minutes long or so about how NASA is going back to the moon. And this will get you all excited for the spinning galaxy craft that we'll do. So take a look. I'm going to try to share my screen. I'm a little challenged when it comes to the IT, but I'll do my best. OK, hold tight. Is everybody seeing my screen? Yes. All right, perfect. Between 1968 and 1972, America launched nine human missions to the moon, six of which successfully touched down, allowing 12 men to walk on the lunar surface. NASA's next chapter of lunar exploration, called Artemis, has the task of not just going to the moon to create a long-term human presence on and around it, but also to prepare for ever more complex human missions to Mars. In short, everything we must be able to do here, we must first do here. So, what will an Artemis mission look like? Everything is designed and tested with our most important element in mind, the astronauts. This is their deep space, human-rated spacecraft called Orion built in three parts. The crew module, where up to four astronauts will live and work throughout the flight. The service module, with life support systems for the crew and its own engine and fuel reserves. 
and a launch abort system with engines capable of pulling the crew module to safety during launch should anything go wrong. To accomplish the task of launching our crew and heavy payloads, NASA is building the Space Launch System, comprising of a cargo hold, an exploration upper stage, a massive core stage, and two extended solid rocket boosters. Altogether, this is the world's most powerful rocket, and it exceeds the legendary Saturn V of the Apollo era in numerous ways. Sitting on the launch pad, the entire rocket, fully fueled, weighs just over 6 million pounds, 5.2 million of which is just the fuel. Once ignited, there was no stopping the comes next. All four RS-25 engines and the two solid rocket boosters come to life, thundering our crew upwards. Two minutes after ignition, the solid rocket boosters are spent and released. Eight minutes after launch, the core stage is depleted and separated. The upper stage fires briefly, placing Orion into a parking orbit around the Earth. Here, the crew reconfigure the spacecraft and check systems to confirm everything is ready for deep space travel. With a go from mission control, the crew reignite the exploration upper stage engines to leave Earth entirely. The exact timing of this maneuver is critical to reach a speed that can escape Earth's gravitational pull, but also put Orion on a course that will intersect the moon days later. Once this burn is complete, the upper stage of the SLS is jettisoned and the crew aboard Orion coast for several days toward all that awaits them at the moon. Approaching the moon, we see the fundamental differences between Artemis and Apollo. Instead of requiring Orion to serve as an expendable lunar command module or to carry a constrained lunar lander, the Artemis missions will take advantage of a different approach, pre-staging. Everything needed for lunar missions will be positioned in advance by commercial and international partners. This includes rovers, science experiments, and human rated systems on the surface. But it also includes a dedicated lunar station in orbit around the moon called Gateway. Here at this station, we can pre-stage a robust lunar lander and establish a strong communications relay. Designed with open standards, the Gateway can be expanded as new missions and partnerships develop, allowing multiple human missions on the moon at the same time and enabling ongoing science to be conducted even between human missions. The Gateway is also capable of adjusting its orbit to allow access to every part of the moon, something the Apollo missions could not do. But the real key in this approach is placing Gateway in a unique halo orbit to perfect the maneuvers needed for Mars missions. And with the growing list of commercial and international opportunities, Gateway is the ideal hub between Earth and all that lies beyond. Returning to our crew as they approach Gateway, the Orion must match the elliptical orbit of the station in order to successfully dock. Once on board, pre-selected crew members transfer to the lunar lander, while those assigned to Gateway remain on station. The lunar lander system itself is built for three unique steps. Descending from the halo orbit of Gateway down to a low lunar orbit, descending from low lunar orbit to the surface, and once the lunar mission is complete, launching from the surface of the moon and ascending all the way back to the orbiting Gateway. Once back aboard the Orion spacecraft and undocked from Gateway, the crew fire their engine once to break out of the halo orbit and once again to sling the spacecraft around the moon, placing it on a multi-day trajectory back towards Earth. As they near the end of this journey, the service module is released and the crew module is oriented heat shield first. Entering Earth's atmosphere at 25,000 miles per hour, the friction of air slows Orion considerably, while also subjecting it to temperatures of 5,000 degrees. With the Orion now at just 300 miles per hour, a series of parachutes uniquely tested and produced for this moment deploy, decelerating the craft to just 20 miles per hour for splashdown. With each successful mission, Artemis ushers in the next wave of men and women to explore our moon and prove that together we are ready to go beyond. Exciting, right? Super exciting. <laughs> so uh, it, it sounds like, or it looks like there'll be a space station orbiting around the moon too? Yes, correct. That is the gateway. So that's the next generation, if you will, space station that will be orbiting around the moon with the crew on board. So first step is to, to prove that we can send humans back to the moon and the next step is gateway. Okay, that's so cool. <laughs> Great. 
So um, do we have any questions about that? Otherwise, Martha, what I'm going to do is head right into the galaxy spinning craft that relates to building a rocket that's going to orbit around a, a galaxy. Um, and I just want to make sure everybody has had an opportunity to look over the supply list and have their supplies ready beside them somewhere. And for parents or guardians or the adult in the room, please note that this activity does involve potentially um, you using, not the child or the youth, but you using a drill to make a small hole into the top of the bottle as well as the bottom of the bottle. And I did find that sometimes a um, flimsy or a thinner um, material, um, plastic, maybe some water bottles use thinner plastic than others. You could even use just a regular um, pair of scissors or, or ballpoint pen that has a really good pointy end to it. So either way, or if you want to do that at the end or later on, you can do that as well. So I just want to caution us and say safety first, everybody, okay? Sounds good. All right. So let's go ahead and, and move into today's craft. And you're going to meet with Wade Mickley. He is a graphic designer at NASA Langley Research Center. So I'm going to cue him up and you're going to join him and do today's activity. Hold tight. And I will share my screen so you can see that as well. OK. And we're also um, going to get the link for sharing the materials again in case anybody else needs it. So we'll be posting that everyone in just a moment. Thanks, Martha. Is everybody seeing um, screen, black screen? Yes. All right, perfect. So Hello, welcome to my studio. I'm Wade Midley. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and my job. Then we're going to build the Galaxy Spinner craft. Here's an example that I built. It's galaxy, Earth, then Mars, and then the Sun, that's what I use. And then it has a shooting star I created on top. It's kinetic, meaning it moves, moving, spin it up. The tighter you spin it, the faster it goes. And let it go. Pretty cool. You're gonna build your own, which will be even more fun than mine, no doubt. And I got my tools. So a little bit about myself and what I do. Um, I work as a graphic designer at NASA Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia. Um, as the graphic designer, I collaborate with other scientists, engineers, researchers, and many other people on center. We're all working together to solve problems, all different in unique and creative ways. Um, as a graphic designer, it's um, it's about making something easy to use or easy to under understand. Gathering the information, you're collaborating and working together to have a fun product. And I use colors, the letters, the pictures, illustrations to help people understand things. So basically, I solve problems through art. And I work in the graphics group, which is under Media Solutions branch. And that's a team of other creative individuals. Photographers, videographers, um, the printing and duplication, and there's graphics. And we do a little bit of everything in graphics. There are logos. Um, conceptual illustrations, technical illustrations, animations, uh, exhibit design, anything print, flyers, signage, a little bit of everything. And it's a lot of fun. And I'm um, lucky to work there. I learn a lot every day. Okay, enough about me. Let's get started on the spare tool. These are a few of the materials we'll be using in my colored construction paper. I'm using black. I will wrap around the bottle. You can use the dark blue. And I have color colors, primary colors, secondary colors, red, yellow, blue, and orange. Use any colors you want. You can use a little foil, glitter. But these are my tools that I use for this one. I have a black marker. Uh, I have scissors. 
I'm trying not to say that uh, too much. <laughs> the glue stick. I'm using a paint marker and I have paints. Paintbrush, water, napkin, to clean your brush, keep your brush clean. And there are even those pliers to use on your paper clips, large and small paper clip. And some rams. And scotch tape. I used a water bottle for the example that I showed. For this, I'm going to use a sports bottle. So we'll both learn this. Did I mention we yeah, have rubber bands? Large and small. And you'll need a drill with a 316 bit. This is the bit. Get your parents to do this just for safety. And you'll need a pair of goggles just in case. I think that's it. So let's get started. Okay, we're starting on our project. Instead of using black like I did the first bottle, I would try purple. Something different. Try something different. You never know what'll happen. So First thing we're going to do is take a sports bottle. The first one I use the water bottle. Take the labels off if you want to, but keep the caps. Need those. And I take the bottom of the bottle from the edge of the paper. Um, take the white frame or any kind, anything you want to mark it with. I'm marking it right at the neck of the bottle right here. Because I'm going to. I'll show you. Hold the paper at the lines that I just made. Voila. Take the scissors and cut fold. Like so. Discard the paper. And use it for something else. Later. And then I'm going to wrap the paper and cut on the edge of the bottle. Wrap it and see for the touch, you want to go past that about half an inch. Right there. Half inch. So I'm just going to do that again. I'm going to fold. Nowhere to cut. Is. So I'm going to put the paper at the bottle down to see where the bottle starts to curve here. I'll put a line here, here, and a white line. And just gently fold it. You're not going to cut it. You'll just know you want to keep your big objects try to below this line because this area is going to fold in. Kind of like, see how that did to wrap around the top? That's what we're doing. Next, we're going to cut out our planets. I'm going to use the blue for the Earth. Maybe in two inches in diameter. I take the gram. Rough circle, cut it, and turn the paper. You can use a jar, top of a jar, or a compass if you have to make a circle. I'm just keeping mine loose. So there's one. That's the earth. This one is orange. I'm going to use this bottle cap from the water. And rough out a circle. See that? And this will be Mars. Actually, 
NASA Perseverance is landing on Mars Yahoo! next month, in mid February. Um, cruising to Mars right now to look for signs of ancient life and collect samples of rock and soil for possible returning to Earth. And they'll have a Mars helicopter hitching a ride on the Perseverance rover. So that's going to be the first powered flight on Mars. That's pretty exciting. There's Mars. Now, I'm going to grab my pencil and make a moon. You take as little as you want. It's big, it's closer to you, it's smaller, it's further away. Oops, I'm all over. There we go. You can clean it up. I put it on the pencil side on the back. And some people might showing here draw a half circle i'm doing this really quick cut half circle mm. oh my goodness out of the paper and then clean it up but i use this one that's the moon all right so let's pause for a second to give everybody a time to make sure that they have their earth their mars and their moon created so again, the, the blue circle on your screen, if you can see my cursor moving, that is Earth. The red circle in the middle was Mars. And then the smaller white circle, or it may be gray on your screen, that is the moon. All right. So let's give everybody just a few seconds to go ahead and, you know, clean up their circles or cut out their circles. I'm just going to take maybe 20 to 30 seconds and pause the video with Wade and give everybody a chance to... Uh, get their planets and moons made, okay? And when, uh, Katrina, one of my favorite things when you're doing um, crafts of the solar system and the galaxy, it's just sort of fun to remember the, the scale, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, and then, remember, they're not so close and they're not this size, but it's still fun to think of them in relationship to each other, so. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so Mars happens to be one of, our closest planets to our Earth, or Mars is close to Earth, um, our closest neighbor, if you will, um, in terms of planets. Um, it takes roughly seven months um, as you're continuing to work on your craft. It takes a NASA spacecraft about seven months from the time it leaves Earth to the time it arrives on Mars. And so uh, Wade mentioned that there is a spacecraft that's landing with a rover as well as a helicopter. It's actually landing on February 18th, and it actually left in 2020, boys and girls. So imagine that, seven months in order for it to get uh, to the red planet, and it's traveling at over 17,000 miles per hour. So that's pretty awesome and pretty fast. All right, um, I'm, I'm looking at two screens. If you see me looking away from you guys and what Wade is doing from time to time, I'm looking at another monitor to monitor the chat. So is everyone doing well? Um, if, Martha, if you'd like, I can go ahead and continue on to the next step in the, uh, the craft. Sounds great, thank you. You're welcome. And please, I don't mind pausing or, or interrupting and giving you factoids along the way. And I know Wade is as well. So let me go back to the video. Nice. And, if, and if you're not finished, yeah. everyone, don't worry. You will be able to uh, keep going. Keep going. Keep going a little, a little All right. And I see you, Caitlin. Um, you, you mentioned that you're not done yet. That's okay. Wade is going to give us time because he's going to start to, um, I want to use the word decorate, but he's going to start adding details to his Earth, Moon, and Mars. So that'll also give you time to uh, to catch up to possibly where he is. No worries, okay? And make a sun. I'm going to do another small circle. Oops, and I'm sorry, the orange was the sun. He's now cutting out. Um, the orange was Mars. He's now working on the sun. You can be as precise as you like. The face 
the star of the sun. And Martha and everybody else, I'll pause it again in a few seconds, okay? And I'm gonna take this <laughs> and all the rays around that sun. Sun rays. Okay, careful. That's going off camera. I don't want it to fall on them. What we were doing. So I can clean it up. And then I like to go in. And you can cut sharp like triangles that I'm making little rays. Like so, and then I put that in the center. And that's my sun. Next, I put these pulleys off the space. And then clean up. Clean up. And then I'll use red and orange and yellow. And this is where you all can be Mars. very creative with your planets. You don't have to do it just like Wade. Squiggly shapes. And then excuse me. I'll grab a yellow one. All that on there for Mars. It's Mars. And then the sun. I'm going to add some beams, some beams, orange, red, beams of light coming from the sun, like so. And then the moon, excuse me, I'm gonna put it round. This is my black marker. And if you don't have a black marker, Fingers. use a crayon or a pen. Whatever you like. Amen. The first human to walk on the moon was Neil Armstrong, and that was in oh, July 20th, in 1969. So that's a Artemis program set to explore the moon. And one of the astronauts on Artemis mission will be the first woman on the moon, which is very exciting. Ah, the Earth is behind space. There's the Earth. There's the Sun. And there's Mars. I'm going to pause right here for one second and give everybody a chance to work on their Moon, their Mars, their Sun. And he's about to go into Earth. So I think that'll give everybody um, some time. So again, the orange was your Mars, uh, your yellow, and yours does not have to look exactly like uh, Wade's. And so your yellow is your sun. The white or gray looking little circle is the moon. And he was just about to draw the uh, different continents and ocean on Earth. So we'll give you all a few minutes. Take your time as best you can to catch up um, and cut out your circles and start to um, decorate them or add details to your planets and your moon. Are there any questions while we're waiting and letting, giving you all um, a chance to, to work on your, your planets and your sun and moon? Don't mind answering questions while you work along. I'm okay. Let's see, we got one comment from Caitlin saying, thank you, I am caught up. <laughs> okay, that's good, Caitlin. And then I like to think in my mind of just, um, I know that this is not really how that goes, but you know, engineers kind of doing arts and crafts on their own with all of their calculations and their simulations on the computer, you know, of what they're creating and testing. It's, it's, it's you know, arts and crafts advanced. <laughs> <laughs> they go hand in hand. Think about it. So your science, your technology, your engineering and, and math, you may hear them called STEM from time to time. So STEM classes and even art go together because what you're doing is using your imagination and your creativity 
as well as what you understand that works scientifically or you and you're taking all of that information and knowledge and again your imagination and your creativity and you're you're bringing like wade said at the beginning and you're bringing all of that together and it starts with a piece of paper or maybe nowadays a computer program where you're actually sketching out um you know we have the idea to send humans to the moon or send humans to mars but what does that spacecraft look like you know, somebody has to design it. And that's what we're doing right now. You are designing um, your own spacecraft eventually that's going to go around um, your your galaxy. So it, it starts in your mind, boys and girls, with an idea. And then you have to say, OK, let me base it on something that I really know in science or math. Um, and then you have to make that that imagination or that thought come to life. And so engineers need people um, who are artistic and have the ability to, you know, to make that idea into a reality. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. Are there, are there any questions or if you just let me know how you're doing in the chat, I'll go ahead and start the video again. I don't see any other comments, so I think it'd be okay to the press play and and MJ says a little behind. Okay, MJ, we will press pause again. Okay. All right, we'll give it a few more minutes um, to move forward. But again, you'll have some more time to catch up. Okay, or continue working. That's right. Keep on working, and then we'll pause. So Earth, we are going to get a paintbrush and green paint. acrylic paint and for those you don't necessarily have to have paint at home green crayons or green markers work just fine and paint the continents again wade is an artist so he has a ton of supplies at home south america very loose the idea europe china i don't know about you but wade makes it look kind of easy Clean off your paintbrush. Always keep the brushes clean. Whenever you need to use them again, they'll be really nice to have. A clean brush, trust me. So I have earth, let that dry. And I like to make, you don't have to, fun faces on my planets and my son. I'm going to clean up my son. But give him a face. Morris, his face is on the other side. I can't see it. I'm letting my earth dry. It's still wet. And then I'm going to add clouds in a face. But while that dries, I'm going to take my glue stick purple crazy kind of fun back of the sun head sunny head stick it to the center back of the rays get it all over the back i want to put paper underneath that and Chris, I see your time. question about fitting up 200 billion stars in your galaxy. Let's put the sun. On the That's a lot. So space. it's a lot of dots. I don't think you're going to be able to fit it in your paper version. Push it down. <laughs> but they're definitely out there in real Same space. With Mars. <laughs> or you might need a. Uh, Put him over here. Something larger than a two liter bottle there, and Chris. And then Mars. <laughs> oh, that was Mars. And then the moon. Right there. Earth still drying. Oh, Earth. And while Earth dries, I'm going to take the white and, and draw in some stars. It can be dots, 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 bursts, 
Okay. Dots, dots. Stars here. Stars everywhere. Stars. I think my earth will go here. While it dries. I might add a little halo like this around my moon. Maybe I'll take some yellow and go off the page there on the edge of the sun. Be creative. Same with the Mars, give it a glow. Maybe somebody has a shooting star on it. Oh, white, red. Grab the earth. Some glue on the back. Right about there. And grab this scrap sheet of paper. I can push it down. If you want to, you can go back and paint it again or add more. Well, but I'm going to do that again. Give the earth a big smile face. Aww. And draw some clouds. This be clouds on the surface. If you look at the earth from space, clouds kind of encompass and hug the earth. It's moisture. I like they're hugging earth. And add some clouds. Even give that a glow. And if you have a paint marker, it be a little more opaque. You can use glitter. No rules, really. Just have fun. It's your space. It's your world. Just explore. Just like astronauts. Explore with color. Drawing. Just keep drawing. Adding it all. And more. You can even add color. There's color in space. There's Stars, planets. You could even go back later and add the ISS. It's somewhere between endless. the Earth in. and the Moon in low stuff. Earth orbit. That's that right out there. Okay, next. We'll let that dry and come back to it. All right, so I'm going to pause it just for a few seconds. Just to see if everybody is with us still. Again, your Earth, Moon, and Mars and Sun does not have to look exactly like Wade's, but um, I love his smiley faces. I think it captures the cuteness of space, everybody. <laughs> if I can say that, the cuteness of space. Um, everybody doing okay? Just let me know in the chat. And if you were busy working, we were making some funny um, comments. <laughs> in the chat too, just talking about how will I fit Chris Mon to saying how will I fit my 200 billion stars in my galaxy and these are all just fun things to think about when you're, when you're making art right and I and I was saying that you can make your stars different colors to represent different ages. Yeah. Chris wants to pull his off and make a supernova have it vanish. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea I didn't see the one about the the Diet Coke and Mentos in the bottle. Just be careful when you do that one. But yeah, that's pretty good too. I'm about to try that one. And you can also use glitter. Um, you know, if you want to come back later and you know add a little bit of glue drops on your image and add some glitter to it. Um, be creative. Have fun with it. Um, let's see. Is everybody good? All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit play, Martha and Chris, and carry on. Okay. Everything's dried. You have your sun, your moon, your Earth, and Mars, and the galaxy. Stars. You can add colors in the sky. You can even 
add some black marker for space. To the top, see where we made the line there? I want to go in and maybe cut in the center. So this, this part right here that he's that cutting section. little slots is so hole. that it will wrap Last around section. your bo your bottle. I'm gonna wrap it. That's right. We're not gonna tape it. We're just gonna make sure. Oh. He's make actually sure. gonna cut a few more um, little slots. Hold the bigger objects. And and that's gonna all depend on the around. bottle that you use in terms of how many you need to cut. Around. That's how it's gonna fit. And we're just gonna again you want it to fit as okay. snugly as possible around your bottle. So you may need more little slots for slits try. in your Maybe paper. Cut or you them. may need less. Um, since this file is a little wider. Okay. Now we're gonna get a cardboard. Uh -oh. Here comes the fun part. And if you don't have cardboard, cardboard maybe you're using a, a piece of cardstock okay. or a, a thick piece of reusing. paper. So we're going to make a rocket. See how these lines go? So maybe have them go vertical and draw maybe a two inch rocket. Yeah. So this could be your space launch system, the rocket that's going to carry like astronauts to the moon and back. And the fins. Be creative. Like that. We're just doing the, the outline. The be careful with your scissors or Get the adult with you to give you a helping hand. A little hard to cut, but and then I like to cut for that line. Turn around. Sometimes cutting through cardboard can be a little Touch challenging. That line and come from the nose and cut to the fin. And the other side, nose. Careful. Take your time. Cut to the fin. Right. Now we got a rocket. I'm gonna pause it for just a few seconds Cut. right here so you can kind of see his rocket, but give you a chance if you're cutting it out, well drawing it first and cutting it out. I'll give you a few seconds, okay? And again, I'll just type in the, the chat that the NASA's rocket that's gonna carry the next man and the first woman to uh, the moon is called the Space Launch System. And it's actually, we just had an engine test for that rocket um, in December. It was down in uh, Mississippi slash Louisiana. NASA has 10 centers across the United States. And we typically launch rockets from at least three different locations. We have the capability of launching rockets from NASA Kennedy Space Center in Orlando, Florida. We also can launch rockets uh, from right here in Virginia. Um, it's called Wallops Flight Facility. It's on the eastern shore. Like if you're going towards Maryland, um, we're able to launch smaller rockets from Wallops as well as out in um, NASA um trying to remember Annenberg it's it, actually we partner with the Air Force they have a, a launch facility that we're able to launch from California um, besides those three centers um, there are also NASA centers in Texas Maryland I'm trying to remember all the different locations uh, New Mexico and there are three centers in California I'm not sure how many people knew that but there are 10 NASA centers um, all across the United States and the rockets engines were just tested as I mentioned it was called the green run test and if you want to google that or um, find out more information if you weren't aware um, that's just one of many steps that we're doing or our engineers and scientists are doing to 
ensure that everything is going to work so that we can successfully launch in 2024. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and play the video again. Pretty good size one. Thanks, Chris. Um, I want to make some flames shooting out of the back. I'm going to take this orange and the pencil. And draw boom, coming out of the tail like that. See that? And then try to an angle, angle, all of that curve. That's straight. Your flames can look might look different than mine. That's okay. And cut that is off. And then you know, off my surface, my desktop. And I might draw some water on both sides. That yellow, red. If you've ever seen a a rocket launch, or if you're old enough to remember a space shuttle, they would actually hose the the launch area also with water to prevent things from catching fire as the uh, the engines ignited and it was blasting off into space. Pretty cool. This is what I do. I'm gonna take the glue, put it on just a little part. See on the edge of the tail. And I'm going to press it on top of there, like that. Dry. And then decide what color rocket you want. I'm going to need a white rocket, but I want it to have red fins. Red, a piece of red. See, my fans are. We'll cut two little pieces. They fit. See how they fit just over the fans. Put some glue. Just on the fans. down there's many ways to do this take that down see the squares press it down Let's see on the other side I'll cut that off cut the excess the overlap off There it is. And if you have enough of that red, flip it on the other side. You have to glue it down. Take those friends on. And those friends on. You can paint too. You can use paint to do this. You don't have to use the cardboard. I just like the bright color. Do the same thing on that side. Cut it close to the edge as you can. You might want to wait till the glue dries a little more so it doesn't move. I'm doing this faster so we can show you the process. Maybe you can watch this video later. Take your time. So that's the fins. Next, I'm going to take a piece of a sheet of white paper. That's the one we used for the moon. See how big so we'll cut. And everybody, just to keep us within no. the allotted time yeah, to overlap. end at six o'clock, I'm going to speed up a, a little bit in a few seconds. I'm going to, you know have him finish out the rocket 
Um, but we also um, want to show a little bit more of the, the building of the, the bottle. I'm sure you get the edges and the nose. So after this part, I'm going to speed it up it just up a little bit, hands. okay? But the video will be posted later, right, Martha? Yes, it will be. Okay. I just thought of something. Because the next part is just after you build a rocket, is very important and that's to actually attach it the to shape. the, the bottom. So I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. The next step is again, him just continuing to work on his rocket. It's going to take me just a few seconds to let my video catch up. And while we're doing that, um, you can kind of see what his completed rocket looks like. Give it a couple of seconds more and it should um, start again. The white one. And again, you can add color to it if you want to. Any color? I'm going to add this. I want to show moving. There's a rocket. All right. And next, so we're going to. Here's the part I really want you to see is together. show you how to connect the rocket to your bottle. Okay. We're back. I added a little bit of color to my, my rocket, as you can see. And this is construction paper and cardboard. I'm gonna put that aside. Grab my sports bottle. And we're gonna prepare to drill a hole in the bottom and the top with a 316 bit. So this is the part where you, you would need your drill, goggles and your drill the and the adult doing this part of the plastic. activity. That can be and you don't have to do it right now, but at least we'll show you how to get started. Let's get your safety glasses. Put those on. parents to do this like I said and your drill three sixteen bit bottom of the bottle press the bit against the plastic the cap on and do the same so let's press down it won't take too much i want to back up you have your holes you have a little bit of extra there on the top so you want to pull that away you don't want that to snag your little spinner but you might take a pencil push that down in there I just so want to make sure, Martha off. and everyone, that you can see it's the part the that Wade, Wade does to um, create the spinning motion. Set my um, upside down. Grab my the small spinning paper part clip. to the the bottle, and then I'm going to pause. So this it I'm going to try. Um, one toss it back over to you, band. Martha, for because I think we're going to run out Take of time if I don't. Clip, my small one, and kind of loop it in there and get it secure inside. The paper clip. Excuse me. And grab the large paper clip and open it up. Bend it. Okay. Open it up. See the hook there? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this feed the end without the paper clip into the hole. Going down in there.
Get in there as far as you can. It's in there. And grab this. Feed it in there. And grab a hold of the rubber band. Hold on to the wire securely. You get the wire. Take the cap. Slide it through. Holding on to that wire. And screw the cap on. And so we're about to screw wrap up. I'm going to talk about the right way. Get it tight. And Chris. Pull that through. Sure, I'm here. Through, um, but, uh, you can still see that. Can, uh, maybe if we lower the video, we can have the video play. So you all can be watching while we're finishing up. Yeah, you can but um we will have the, 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 the and pellet. we will have i know this was the tricky part of the program we will have this video posted up on the astronomy days youtube page you will be able angle. to go to this video directly to help you finish and that'll be done pretty quickly um, after today yeah. so we'll send you the the link for when you registered we'll send that link to all of you and so there was a question of how did he connect the paper clip to the rubber band? He bent the wire on the paper clip to make a little bit of a hook. And again, with the video being posted to the link um, or to the museum website, you'll be able to go back and pause it and replay it as many times as you like so that you can get it um, right. But let me go ahead and just kind of fast forward just a little bit and you can see it um, in motion, Chris and Martha and everybody. Um, spinning around. This will be the last thing I say for the the evening. And thank you, Chris. Um, he posted the YouTube playlist for Astronomy Day, so you can find it. Oh, perfect. Thank you. And uh, while you're watching this final wrapping of your galaxy bottle, did you, um, if you have been making your craft along with us, which I think a lot of you were, we and you feel comfortable, we would love to have you share your your craft with us. And how we will do that is we will pause our recording. So your your picture won't be part of our recording, but you're welcome to share your your craft with us if you want. And you can type that into the chat if you'd like and say, or raise your hand, raise your digital hand, and we can invite you to turn your video on if you'd like. Pull that up. Pull that up. And you can also um, take a picture and share it on Facebook and tag NCMNS if you'd like glue. to do that with us as well. If you don't want to show this, it would, you just have to glue it and then hold it for a while. Until Martha, it do I need to stop sharing my video so if anyone wants to share their screen, they can? Um, they do, but I haven't seen any raised hands, so I think we have lots of busy crafters here. Okay. Well, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Martha. I'm just going to continue to let the video play. It's fun. It, it's fun to do... To, for STEAM, right? The science and technology and engineering and math and art, that they all are interrelated and it's really important for us to use all the parts of our brain, right, when we're learning. Exactly, exactly. So I just want to thank everybody. I know we were going fast through this activity, but I'm thankful that the museum is going to post it so you can, you know, watch it at your own pace and, and complete your activity. Yes, and um, I, um, let's see. It is six o'clock, so I think I will, I will stop sharing your screen and I will have one last farewell screen, mm -hmm. Katrina, if that's all right. Sure. Okay, yeah. everybody, I'll, I'll post our thank you for coming slide today. We are so glad that you could join us for Astronomy Days. We hope that you are able to come visit the museum in person. We are open. You can check out all of the really cool programs that we have featured as part of this week extravaganza of, ex of astronomy learning. And uh, we hope to see you again in the future. Thank you so much for spending some of your Sunday afternoon with us. Bye everybody. <laughs>